Heals welcomes you to the third Euro Symposium on Healthy Aging. Heals is the largest non governmental organization in Europe promoting and advocating scientific research into longevity and biogerontology. Thanks to generous support from our sponsors, Heals was able to organize this conference. The conference will highlight the cutting edge of knowledge in the field of biogerontology and provide a unique opportunity for researchers, government officials, biotech executives, and advocates from around the world to meet, network, and forge new scientific collaborations. for the invitation from uh, Hills uh, and uh, particularly from uh, uh, Didier, which I, I work uh, often. Um, well, um, longevitists. longevitists are often accused to be responsible. Uh, indeed, radical life extension should intuitively result in an overpopulation crisis, what was uh, saying. Uh, but um, I will let uh, to, uh, David to tell it, uh, and Didier maybe will uh, tell it, um, uh, the answer uh, uh, to this uh, rational affair. Um, however, um, in my uh, forecasting works, I have another concern. Um, yeah. um, since many years, I wonder uh, what will happen in society where children will have become scarce. Actually, uh, the demographic uh, evolution uh, that uh, makes us optimistic toward um, overpopulation indicates two things. As people uh, live longer and longer, uh, the fertility rate decreases. Therefore, mathematically, the fraction of uh, young children decreases. In a country like France, uh, which was the first in the world to begin uh, its demographic transition, this phenomenon has been uninterrupted in, since uh, two centuries. Okay. According, uh, for example, according uh, to the, the French National Institute of uh, Demographic Institute, the fraction of people younger than uh, 20 in the French population, you see, uh, was, well, um, in the, um, the, the 70s, 50, it was uh, about 50%. Uh, in the uh, 80, uh, um, uh, it was uh, 41%. In the 80, 50, uh, it was... Uh, um, less than 40. In the 1900, it was uh, uh, around that, uh, 34. In the 1950, it was uh, 30%, 30 about 30%. Uh, in, the, in our days, and according to the, the same institute, uh, we are about, about less than 25% um, of the world population. And uh, there is uh, some uh, forecast uh, uh, for example, for the year 2060, and the projection, it's uh, something uh, like about uh, 22 percent less than uh, uh, around uh, sh um, 20 percent of the of the population. Um, this evolution came along with an increase of lifespan expectancy, as David said, from uh, 25, 30 years to 90 years in the classical uh, projection. What could possibly happen if those longevitist hopes came true? Okay, uh, one thing is clear uh, when we talk about the distant future, we know nothing. But we can make some uh, uh, hypotheses. I propose you to try to imagine what could happen over a century if, uh, let's say, tomorrow, we discovered the, the Holy Grail, uh, allowing us to control the aging process. My main uh, hypothesis here is that after a transition period where, where we will have fewer and fewer children, 
we will end up having almost no children at all. Just enough children to compensate the rare accident death, the rare accidental death. But um, Lux looks closer at mortality by violent death, which leave out illness, aging, what's aging, and excesses in consumption. Violent death includes, among other, accidents, suicide, and homicide. On the last decade in France, violent death rate, uh, the violent death rate decreased under 60,000 deaths per year, and it's still decreasing. Expecting that the population to stabilize, uh, rather around uh, 75 million of people in France, and uh, migration numbers left aside, but it's minor, uh, it will mean 60 to 70,000 births per year, around one birth per 1,000 inhabitants. By contrast, this last year, our uh, French birth rate fluctuated around 11 to 13 births per 1,000 inhabitants. That means it's, it's more than 10 times more. And if uh, we are looking at it with a population pyramid, such changes will look like this. No, this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that means that the, the, the renewal rate of the population will be very, very low. Of course, obviously, people do not reproduce with the first intention to stabilize the numbers. So much uh, factors are at stake here, such as the family social status, the need to project oneself in an offspring, and even more surprisingly, uh, love. Uh, so it seems very unlikely the chart I just show you uh, turns to be relevant, and uh, well, I suggest you to forget all uh, about it uh, right away. There is other things. Other factor will be the, the economical context. If people tend to reproduce more in the less wealthy countries, what will we expect once we reach a state of radical longevity, as the case may be a society of abundance, or on the contrary, the case of a generalized scarcity, which uh, will force us in a degrowth society? Actually, empiricism will make me say that in both cases, once a population has gone past the collapsing of its birth rate, they won't easily get back a high rate birth, whatever given the, uh, the given condition. However, an uh, economic crisis in a society which was used to a certain level of comfort won't necessarily compel people to reproduce yet. The struggle uh, to keep a normal lifestyle, at least considered as such, could develop into a partial inability to project oneself into one's progeny. Uh, why bother to make babies uh, who are going to uh, give them a life in poverty or misery? Wealth and abundance rather compel us to individual projection. But in the context of a radical longevity, the desire to reproduce could be postponed a long way. In the long run, that desire could be often revisited, okay, but with some significant intervals between two maternity or paternity, if both worlds will still mean something then. Another point here, we can consider that a more consistent longevity will automatically be followed by a decrease in birth rate because a same generation of people living a, a very long life will have a lesser desire to renew often the experience of parentality, when numerous generations will reproduce more quickly. We must also keep in mind that uh, we, or especially women, live under the pressure of a limited period of fertility. Medically assisted reproduction has pushed back the frontier of biological fertility, but uh, has uh, not made it disappear. Radical transhumanist perspectives such as uh, uh, artificial worms or rejuvenation could allow us uh, to have children at any age. On the long run, 
the social pressure to have children before the age of 40 could disappear, which will make the number of pregnancy decrease as they become more spread over time. Uh, there, there are many other reasons uh, uh, to pursue denatality, I think. But, okay, uh, that being said, we know that it's very easy to make mistakes while taking about the, the future. But what interests me for the, for the most today is to wonder what could be the consequences if natality actually collapses. We can try to think about the, the benefits and drawbacks of a very long life in good health. Well, similarly, we can try to anticipate the effect of a huge decrease in the number of children in our societies. The consequences could be the following. A decrease of the number of institutions related to children, maternity, clinics, Garden and playground, school childcare, center, center and kid amusements, areas in squares and parks, entertainment, uh, plates and uh, shows for kids, uh, etc. A decrease of the number of jobs related to children. Uh, in France and in many uh, European countries, uh, the biggest public institution is uh, education. Yeah? So, no more teacher or nannies. Uh, even those nannies too won't have no job. Uh, a decrease maybe of uh, uh, the number of kids seen by an average adult in a single way, in a single day, I mean. Uh, uh, a decrease of the daily experience of, the, of context and age change with children and between children. And many indirect effects that uh, I can uh, even can uh, imagine. The perspective of children's scarcity makes me wonder what the presence of kids brings us and what it costs us. Can we consider advantages or are they only drawbacks? As my time is uh, speech is limited, I will only point out uh, two drawbacks, two main drawbacks. A risk often uh, pointed out is that it's, it will be bring out a dramatic loss of dy dyna dynamism in our societies. Indeed, uh, without young people, we will challenge the views of the elders. Besides, uh, aren't our young years our most creative years? Well, uh, actually, it may be true for art and uh, uh, for the question of the crawl, you know, of the ancients and the modern, uh, but it's, uh, it seems that it's not true anymore for science. Uh, if you look at the, the middle age of uh, the, the average age uh, of, uh, uh, for example, the, the invention of the main invention of uh, Nobel Prize, uh, it's growing. It was 30, 35 some uh, uh, decades ago, and now it's reached 40 uh, years uh, as an average, and this age is growing and well I want I want to uh, enter in the explication there's a lot of implication explication to uh, that but uh, the this uh, number is uh, steadily increasing but in my opinion the biggest drawback will be the loss of the experience of contact with children indeed does it now play a huge role in the way we give meaning to our lives? Having children who around us give us an example of simplicity, of spontaneity, of curiosity about the world, but also of our surprisingly ability to adapt. And so childhood offers its naivety as well as its amazing potential, because the child is the one that can become. And therefore, the child itself is a metaphor of mankind in transition, I will say. What about benefits in exchange for such losses? Benefits might be there. Oh, say, sending a much smaller share of GPD? Bah, <laughs> and children's it's cost, hmm? education, etc. It's not very optimistic. 
uh, not having to, to keep starting over from the beginning and condemning younger generation to repeating the same mistake because of their ignorance and the naivete. Is it a positive thing? Uh, for me, maybe uh, further reinforce the positive image of childhood as a symbol of what gives meaning to the lives of adults. Because not that in the West, for example, this positive image did not exist uh, yet uh, neither with the, the same importance nor the, with the same intensity when our society had many more children. In highly fertile uh, Western society, Childhood was an unknown and an, in, an invisible, almost without social status or rights. It was the increasing scarcity of children in particular that made us attribute the qualities to this phase of life which accompanied it today. I will not be surprised if the, an even greater scarcity of children gave them a mythical status and gave rise to a veritable religion of childhood, with liturgies even more impressive than those uterus today at the welcoming of a newborn or uh, during year-hand festivities. Ultimately, thought. Um, I cannot foretell the future, <laughs> and I really have no ideas what consequences uh, a collapse of childhood will have on our societies and mentalities. However, I am an historian by training, and what I do know is that the transition uh, from societies which children account for almost 50% of the population uh, to those where it will soon account for but a fifth has not caused a collapse of civilization. It has resulted in profit changes such as widespread of education, a greater investment in each child, a return of uh, uh, engineers, I was, uh, was saying it, David, and these two centuries of the decline of childhood have been the most innovative in the history of mankind. Today, the reduction in the number of children in developing countries especially has resulted in a higher average level of education and an impressive rise in the number of scientists. So, a decline in childhood is not systematically synonymous with less dynamism. There remains just this question, which I pose to longevitivist, and if I can say, has a longevitivist. How can we mitigate the shrinking presence of children in our symbolic landscape. I quickly look at this question, and uh, here I will present uh, five possibilities, but uh, that do not stand out uh, for their originality, and I hope that uh, you will find better ideas. The first, it's uh, admittedly not very original, promoted discovery and colonization of space for not have, nor in the, uh, in the earth, nor never have problem with uh, space. Well, okay. Um, promote, um, um, I want to say, sorry, simulate childhood in our virtual world, which uh, it's uh, a direction which a lot of people are dreaming to, to go, uh, and it will be possible maybe uh, to, um, to simulate, to, to emulate um, avatar with, uh, like, with, which, which uh, will uh, have behaviors like the child. Uh, just uh, ideas. Uh, similar childhoods in the demeanor of some of our robots. It's uh, uh, some of the direction which are actually uh, tasted uh, for uh, social robots. Uh, is it a good idea? Promotes birth rates in proportion to the intelligence use of Earth resources. The question of the superpopulation is not only the problem of the uh, uh, space, but uh, is the uh, problem of the relation uh, with the, the resources. So if we uh, want to continue to have uh, more uh, or other babies and uh, children, uh, maybe uh, we have to uh, take care of uh, this uh, um, equilibrium. 
uh, well, I really hope you will find better idea. Maybe just encourage a form to return to childhood each time we undertake learning a new subject. That means uh, trying to uh, continue to live as the child we was. Yeah. Uh, so that is the, the point. I, I thank you and I really hope uh, you will have uh, better and better ideas uh, to uh, find solution for my problem, if not yours. Thank you very much. <laughs> conscious that we're quite late, so I'll just take two questions. Okay, so actually uh, the argument that uh, there is a trend that uh, people uh, will have uh, less children is the main argument against overpopulation and uh, some people they uh, don't believe in it and some people they love to have children, they don't want to live in a world with less children. How do we have actually a scenario if uh, lifespan, ex lifespan extends, but nothing happens, nothing changes with birth rate, maybe we can just show that basically you have, even if birth rate will not change, you will not have to fear because we have technology and as in previous presentation, it's possible to illustrate that the Earth can sustain uh, much, much, much more people and uh, just to show them a scenario of that it's possible. Uh, my main hypothesis is uh, that the, 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 the change of the, the birth rate had already uh, been uh, almost in all the countries of the world. You can see uh, India, Bangladesh, etc. And there is uh, only, and you can say, even if in a country of sub Saharan Africa, uh, well, the, the, the rate uh, was uh, uh, nine and eight uh, uh, child per uh, uh, woman, and now it's, uh, it's higher than it, it was uh, uh, um, that we was waiting, but uh, it had decreased. It's something like a six uh, child per uh, uh, woman, which is a, a lot for our point of view, uh, but uh, uh, it's not uh, that it was. Uh, so the, the main scenario is the decrease of the population. I, personally, I, I don't, uh, I'm, I'm not afraid of uh, uh, the, 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 super, super, the overpopulation scenario. Uh, on the contrary, uh, there, is, there are um, scenarios more pessimistic in uh, the, um, the collapse, not only of childhood, but in, of the whole population. Uh, well, my point was a little bit in answer. I mean, I also understand that uh, we have so I mean, it's I know I, I watch the stats and I totally agree that the number of chi children is uh, decreasing. I mean that when we when we uh, make speeches on public and when we promote lifespan extension, we show different scenarios. Maybe it will make sense, even though it's less plausible for people like us who know the statistics that uh, uh, nothing will change in the birth rate. Maybe normal people. I mean. They, uh, if they will see that even if nothing will change with birth, uh, with birth rates, we will live well without any problems, maybe it will change their point of view. So they will not be scared even if they don't believe in uh, decreasing of uh, yeah, ch yeah. childhood. As I think I, I say, if you look at the uh, past uh, two centuries, the decrease of uh, population gave to all the world a, a lot of uh, possibilities. Uh, if you th that it's more uh, easy to educate, uh, it's more easy uh, to reach the, the level of uh, university, etc. And uh, it, um, as David was saying, uh, it's certainly an explanation of uh, the disruptive uh, 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 speeds of uh, innovation. Uh, so there is a lot of positive um, aspects. But I was just pointing one, one aspect uh, for myself, which could be problematic.